This is your evening news update for Tuesday, October 12th. Barbados has topped more than 100 COVID-19 related deaths as health authorities reported that three persons passed away on Monday. A 59-year-old woman and an 88-year-old man passed away at the Accident and Emergency Department of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and a 76-year-old man died at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility. All of them were unvaccinated. The death toll now stands at 101. Meantime, 324 new coronavirus infections were confirmed from the 2,781 tests conducted by the Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory on Monday. The positive cases include 82 persons under the age of 18 and 260 people who are 18 years and older. There are 537 people in isolation facilities and 2,284 in home isolation. Barbados has recorded a total of 11,474 confirmed cases of COVID-19 since March last year. To date, 111,022 persons, or 41.7% of the total population, or 49.5% of the eligible population, have received second doses and are fully vaccinated. 24 hours after Prime Minister Mia Motley tabled the idea of the creation of safe zones to return the country to normalcy amid the fight against COVID-19, she took to the airwaves in strong defense of the move in response to criticism leveled by the opposition leader. Speaking on today's edition of Down to Brass Stats, Motley insisted that now is not the time to politicize the fight against the deadly virus. We have seen this divide also in the United States Correct. of America. Across, uh, and, and, and this is what has to stop, because this is not the Barbados that I know. I keep making the point that when we decided to do big things and great things in the past, this is a country where government and opposition have worked together. I can give you the example of David Thompson and the Caribbean Court of Justice because Oinasa sent me to speak to Thompson first before he then settled with David Thompson. Even on matters in the last government, we, um, we, we, we also agreed in the last government when they first came, when uh, Elizabeth Thompson went as an assistant secretary general of the UN. Or I could go before that when Sir George Allen was going for things, Branford Tate and Liz Thompson and Oinasa worked together. Um, on this matter, I would like to believe that even with the appointment of the president, that the leader of the opposition and I have agreed that we can rise above partisanship for that. But I also feel that we need to rise above partisanship for the creation of safety in COVID in this country. She also stood by government's plan to roll out safe zones, rebutting the claim that the initiative is a backdoor approach to mandatory vaccination. There can be no backdoor approach to a jab. You're either getting a jab or you're not. So let's be very clear about that. And the principle of not going for mandating jabs is because I accept that people should have agency over their body wherever possible, okay? And that agency, as an adult, we're talking about, as an adult, that agency comes by being able to say yes or no to the jab. If you say no to the jab, then you have to tell me how else you are going to make yourself safe if you want to work with persons who are vulnerable okay. or you want to do certain jobs. And with respect to the frontline workers, they're working 24-7. And it can't be fair for them, to them for us to be fighting literally so fundamental an issue. When in truth and in fact, everyone knows that the country wants safety. Now, the safety may not come in the same, on the same road, but you and I can both go to Bridgetown from where both of us live without using the same road but we still end up at the same destination. Barbadians have been sharing mixed views on the proposed safe zones. Our news team was out and about, and this is The People's Say. Yes, I believe it's a wonderful idea because each one has to protect themselves. So, for, for me, if I'm vaccinated, if I'm vaccinated, I need someone work for me to be vaccinated also, that we could protect Ourselves and our family. Yeah, of course, because um, that's basically, in reality, I think that's what people really want to do. They want to get um, an opportunity to, you know, free up the mind, take the mind off of the, the things that are happening in life. So entertainment is definitely something that people want to do because that's where they get their little ease and their relaxation, if you want to put it that way. Yeah, I got vaccinated, so I don't feel like I should be 
at risk with people that decide that they may want to take these vaccinations. They've got a choice, so you've got a choice not to be wrong then. So you think there's a freedom up for people who take the decision to vaccinate? Yes, it gives us the freedom that we want. But the Democratic Labour Party is still not happy with government's response to COVID-19. In fact, the party's spokesman on health, Andrea Worrell, charges that government is falling short in its fight to bring the COVID-19 spike under control. He is proposing that government return to house-to-house -house testing to arrest the spread of the Delta variant. The important issue now is basically is controlling the community spread. And what we suggested is that the government should really be doing the operations to can save um, testing and doing more testing within the community, utilizing the rapid test. Um, for an entire community that identify persons who are positive, getting them into isolation and quarantining as quickly as possible all of their contact traces so that we can help to reduce the incidence of the community spread. That's the focus. Obviously, we would so encourage persons to get that um, vaccine and take personal responsibility, which is what we have been saying now for the last couple of weeks and in all presentations that Barbadians need to start taking personal responsibility. To news from the House of Assembly, government has given the assurance that it's working to root out corruption at all levels. Attorney General Dale Marshall made the announcement as he presented the Prevention of Corruption Bill 2021 in the House this morning. I want to assure Barbadians that notwithstanding that they may not have seen any charges brought before or brought against anybody, please be aware that that process is continuing. There are a number of investigations of corruption that have taken place in Barbados since we became the government. And they continue. We brought in a team of high-powered specialists, very well regarded in the field, coming from as far as Australia, Turks and Caicos and other places, in 2019 to begin the process of examining the state of affairs at a number of our statutory bodies and I've spoken about it in Parliament before. Marshall also promised that a Strength and Integrity in Public Life Bill will come before the House for debate shortly. The Integrity in Public Life Bill, and I can say to the Chamber that I expect to be able to lay that new bill in this Chamber before the end of October. We, sir, it is unfortunate that it got defeated in the Senate, in the other place, but that is what it is. We've gone back to the drawing board and the two areas that, they, that the members of the other place specifically said they wanted to address, one area was to do with judges and the other one it slips on mind specifically, but we've gone now and we've addressed those issues and that bill will be laid in Parliament to come back to this house. I pray for its passage in the Senate when it gets to them. Sir. In response, opposition leader Joseph Avali accused government of simply marking time until the next election. He said the Mia Motley administration had failed to deliver on its campaign promise to root out corruption. When the other party is in office, we rail against that issue. When we come, it's all hunky-dory. We are doing our best. We are investigating and we are bringing legislation and we will address that three and a half years. No, you have to face the people who voted for us. Hear me. On the basis of the fact that we promised to address these things, and we failed to address them with all kinds of excuses to which we make recourse. Couldn't get a team from here and couldn't get a team from there. And COVID shut this down and COVID shut that down. And this bill came here and it was defeated in the other bill. All kinds of excuses. Well, the country dies. Well, the country is being raped, this is speaking. Well, the average Barbadian out there constitutes a populace that fall prey and victim 
these people's greed. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Thompson. I'm a vision impaired person. I am also a member of the National United Society of the Blind of Barbados. I am vaccinated. I took the vaccination due to the fact that I am diabetic, I'm asthmatic, and I also have high blood pressure. I had no side effects. Everything went calm and smooth, as my doctor said it would go. Please, people, go ahead and do the right thing. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings in Trinidad and Tobago on the heels of the International Indigenous Peoples Day, the Santa Rosa First Peoples Community is requesting that government consider a national holiday among the observances as a symbol to honor Indigenous people. More in this report from TTT News. And I want to make a call, a public call to the Prime Minister to reconsider a day of recognition to a national public holiday for First Peoples. Chief of the Santa Rosa First Peoples Community, Ricardo Barath Hernandez, said more action is needed to advance the cause of indigenous people in Trinidad and Tobago. In 2017, a one-off holiday was granted on October 13th and on the heels of U.S. President Joe Biden's proclamation that October 11th is Indigenous Peoples Day, Mr. Hernandez reissued the call for an annual holiday locally. Mr. Hernandez said First People should be considered a unique sector of the population who can trace their roots to those who existed before the arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1492. We seek to be in the circle where every creed and race find an equal place. On the international front, over 700 residents on the Spanish island of La Palma were ordered to abandon their homes as lava advanced toward their neighborhoods. More in this report from Reuters TV. According to the Canary Islands Volcanic Emergency Plan, those in La Laguna were told to evacuate with their belongings and pets as a river of molten rock flowed from Cumbre Vieja, a volcano in La Palma's northeastern region. Getting things out of my aunt's house before this demon arrives here, because the path it flows leads to my aunt and grandparents' house. At least get out what we can, because you can't fight against nature. We've made a preventative evacuation with enough time to be able to take out everything that was necessary, documents, things of sentimental value. There were 64 seismic movements on Tuesday, the strongest measuring 4.1. The Spanish National Geological Institute said lava from the eruption that began on September 19th has laid waste to nearly 1,500 acres and destroyed 1,200 buildings. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM. <laughs>